thrust, aka the upwards force on an object due to the weight of displaced liquid. And that should tell you everything that you need to know to be perfectly honest, but this is one of those times where I would highly recommend always draw a picture. So you have a bathtub with some water in, and you've got your little rubber ducky, and you decide to push him underneath the water. But we're going to model the rubber ducky as just a round ball. Now what forces do we know are acting on this ball? Well, first things first, we know that there is weight pulling down. That's always going to be there. Gravity's always there. There is always up thrust as well. By the way, take no notice of the size of the arrows right now. I'm just drawing which direction they're going in. This is always true. There is always going to be weight pulling downwards and there's always going to be up thrust pushing upwards. Question is, why is the up thrust pushing upwards? Well, that's because this ball has a volume V. And when you push this ball underwater, you're actually raising the level of the water by the same volume. This water here does not like being displaced, so it pushes down on the water around the ball, and so it tries to push the ball back up. The weight of the water that's been displaced is equal to the up thrust. So what do we know is true? Just thinking about forces here, if weight is bigger than the up thrust, because they're both always going to be there, object sinks. It's going to accelerate downwards. However, if up thrust is greater than the weight, the opposite is going to happen. Object floats. And of course, the accelerating force is going to be the resultant, e.g. up thrust minus the weight. So let's say that we have 10 newtons of weight, 12 newtons of up thrust, Overall, there's going to be a force of two newtons accelerating the ball upwards. So, if up thrust and weight are equal, if stationary, up thrust equals weight. However, what if our ball is actually going to float? It starts moving upwards. Up thrust is still there, weight is still there, but now we have an extra force, and that is drag. D for drag. Because of the collisions of the object with the water particles or the liquid particles, we have a resistive force. This is always going to be true if an object is moving upwards through a liquid. The resultant force is going to be equals to the up thrust take away both the downwards forces, the weight and the drag. But if it's rising at a constant velocity, at a constant speed, we know that again these forces are equal. So the up thrust is going to be equal to the weight plus the drag, no overall force, even though it's moving upwards. But what if it's moving downwards instead? Then the opposite is true. Yes, we have the weight pulling downwards, up thrust pulling upwards, but now we have the drag pulling upwards as well. Again, the resultant force is going to be equal to the weight, take away both the upwards forces. And again, if a constant velocity, that means that the weight is equal to the up thrust plus the drag. Okay, so let's go into some maths then. What kind of questions might come up? Now, we said that we have weight pulling downwards, didn't we? But what is weight? Obviously, weight is equal to mg, mass times 9.8 times gravitational field strength. Often, though, we don't deal with masses. We deal with densities. Density is given by the letter rho. It's a p without an ear. And we know that mass is equal to density times volume, density being kilograms per meter cubed times by meters cubed, and that gives us kilograms altogether. So therefore, weight is equal to rho v g. But we have up thrust as well. What did we say up thrust was a result of? Well, it's a result of the weight of water that's being displaced. So ultimately, up thrust is a weight as well, but it's the weight of water. So again, we can say this is equal to rho v g, but not rho vg of the ball this time, it's rho vg of water. So rho w times v times g. But the volumes are going to be the same and g is going to be the same because it's a constant. So I have rho w vg and rho b vg, the weight of the water being displaced and the weight of the ball. So if this ball is stationary, then we know that there is no overall force, so the up thrust must be equal to the weight. So we can say rho w vg, weight of the water and the up thrust, is equal to rho b v g, thus the weight of the ball. V and g cancel because they're the same, and we can see that therefore the densities must be equal. We've just proven that if an object floats stationary inside a liquid, that must mean that it has the same density as that liquid. But this is not usually the case. What will happen usually is 
if ball is moving upwards at a constant speed, what do we know to be true? Well, we said that we have the up thrust, but then we have that is equal to the weight and the drag, which is also pulling downwards. What do we know the up thrust to be? We said that's rho WVG, that's equal to rho BVG, that's the weight of the ball, plus the drag. Then what you can do is get all your Vs and Gs on the same side, so we have rho WVG minus rho B VG is equal to D, and then we can factorize, so we can take VG out, And this is quite often the way that questions will go. We'll end up with one density take away the other. So let's say that ultimately we want to find out the density of the ball. All you have to do is take VG over to the other side and then rearrange to find rho B because we know what the density of water is. That's 1000 kilograms per meter cubed. There's one more thing that might come up and that's Stokes law. If you see something that uses dynamic viscosity which is just a constant, then you know you're going to have to use Stokes' Law. Stokes' Law tells you what the drag force is on a sphere in a fluid, and that is F is equal to 6 pi eta RV. R being the radius of the ball, like that. V being the speed, eta here, that is the dynamic viscosity, and that depends on what the surface of the ball is and the liquid that it is in as well. And quite often you'll see it with a subscript D to make it clear that it is a drag force. So you might see questions where this is incorporated into here as well. In this case, this would be our drag force. So you might be asked to find out what the speed of a sphere is using Stokes' Law if you have everything else. So that's it. If you found this helpful, please leave a like, please leave a comment if you think I left anything out. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so you can see when I make new videos, which will be really useful in the summertime when I put out past paper videos. Have a look at the rest of my channel to see all of the other useful videos that I've made to help you out in GCSE and A-level physics. And I'll see you next time.